Hi all, Mass Bandcup from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today I'm here with the Fujifilm FCR XG1, which is a X-ray image scanner. It will take image plates uh, being fed into the machine, and then it is a part of a computed radiography setup, where you take your picture with your X-ray system, you get your image plate, and you can digitalize the image to a yeah, digital X-ray image with this machine. Now, it is kind of stripped down. This is the reason this was thrown out. It has been stripped for all the most important spare parts like user interfaces, the computer, some of the power supplies. But what we do have still is this huge module that we have mounted on all the, the rubber gaskets, which is the whole digital image scanner and reader out. So that contains a laser module and also a photo multiplier tube two very nice items. So along with some high voltage power supplies that seems to be still in place for the tube, this is going to be a pretty nice teardown. And it isn't just a electrical interesting teardown. It has a lot of mechanical parts. The whole machine setup is driven by a lot of belts, gears, rollers and such. Uh, a lot of nice parts that probably could be reused into 3D printing or CNC machine building. Here at the bottom of the unit we have the computer slot uh, where we would have the cards that would control this whole unit. And as we can see we have the slot 3 at the bottom which is named CPU. Slot 2 in the middle is named SCN for scanner. And then we have SNS which is probably a kind of system board or yeah, more like controlling the, the whole uh, servo set up throughout the machine. Now I want you to notice the fuses. I have actually not seen those fuse holders before. But here we have small SMD fuses in yeah small SMD fuse sockets. That's pretty special. At the top we have what seems like a power supply for the servo motors and that is judged by this servo controller board and the large power connectors that goes out through the machine to the different motors. Underneath we have the feeder into the whole scanner unit. Seems to have some kind of flat PCB mounted servo motor here. Kind of a funny setup. A PMT or photo multiplier tube. It's with its own board up here. We will have a better look at that once we get it out. But what is really peculiar with this is that normally you see a lot of plastic fibers used to lead the light up to the tube itself. But this is actually a solid piece of, yeah, it could be acrylic, but it's really formed in a nice way and seems to be cut out and melted into that form. That's pretty interesting. I have never seen that before. The laser unit itself sits up in this black box. Uh, seems to have integrated power supply as it just has a flat band connector going in and then some sensors. Else we just have mechanical stuff and a lot of sensors going out to all these yellow wires that goes everywhere in the unit. On the back side we have the three main servo motors that drives most of the mechanic parts as uh, to take the image film out of the cassette or the phosphor plate out of the cassette and get it into the scanner and reinsert it into the cassette when erased for being reused again. Now for the rest of this uh, teardown uh, we will get everything torn apart. We will take a look at all the mechanical parts and power supplies and the CPU unit and then this whole laser scanner unit will be seen in part two. So the unit is about as empty as I will make it in this video. The rest of the mechanical parts we can take a look at here sitting in the enclosure still. One of the peculiar things I found inside of here is this piece of plastic which is a lid for a cable 
canal that you used on the wall installations for yeah regular mains cabling. Um, seems it's had a job of shielding the uh, image of or the the film plate getting entangled in something else. Seems like quite a weird fix for a medical instrument. Other than that, we have the yeah, the reflective part underneath here where the laser would shine down towards this uh, piece of, you can see the light shining through this see-through plastic. And that is where the um, plastic, this one, connected up to the center. Some of these other parts over here will stay in place until I get them out. I re never really figured out how this whole unit was mounted on the rubber gaskets, but it does seem that usually you can take these whole rubber gasket mounted units out of it and you can exchange it with a new, but this one really seems like it was built in place. Because as of now I seem to actually, oops, yeah, there came out the whole servo assembly. So apparently I did get enough screws out to get that one away. So if we just take a look underneath that, we have the uh, three servo motors sitting here. Just goes out to some common connectors down to the servo controller. And as we can see in here, these screws are what secures the last three rubber gaskets to the base. So this was built in place. Now, um, one of the things that tells me this was not used for humans would be the large amount of dog hairs. The crown jewel of this teardown is really the photo multiplier tube with that very nicely cut out and bent piece of acrylic here. Now, the driver board sitting here at the base of the tube seems to have its own shielded amplifier part with the output plug sitting here. And at the other end, we have a encapsulated high voltage driver. So this is actually quite a nice standalone unit that probably just need a DC input voltage. And then you can get a nice amplified signal out of this. So that we are going to have quite some fun with. The small power supply for the servo motors seems to be three identical sitting down here. Also corresponds with the outputs here. So that can probably also be repurposed into something nice. It's called invert 12A. So let's just guess that's a 12 volt inverter, which also um, corresponds to the if we look at the CPU board here, that there's not much to see on the back plane except what we saw earlier, but underneath here we have a Alpha 400 power supply. Now that is a 5 volt, 24 volt, 24 volt, plus 15, minus 15, plus 24 volt, plus 15 volt DC, so a very nice power supply with a lot of different outputs, especially the plus minus 15 volt for differential amplifiers. So that is for sure getting saved and reused for something else. Now it also had this uh, little switch sitting at the front. So once you remove the front plate, you actually gave a signal to the CPU, probably not to run the laser. Again, very nice parts. The laser module itself has a few broken plastic parts. But other than that, it seems like the whole black plastic unit here is just a standalone. All the metal down here is just shielding. So you only have the film going in and out along the scanning area and not have laser shoot out over all the place. That will be due for another teardown video.
Now among the other nice things is uh, small geared motors, some more stepper motors, 1.8 degree, two and a half amps, good quality hardware, a lot of uh, wire bundles but that is just going to scrap. Then there was this little funny Upto Electronics NFT 7175. Quite a large sensor along with some optics in there so it can do a spread out view of something. See if we can find some kind of uh, data sheet on that. Then there's also all these nice brushes sitting all out through the machine. Now what is the nice thing about these is these are actually metallic. So these can be used for yeah, discharging static electricity in all kinds of stuff or even used as brushes in a Fantagraph generator. So also uh, small nice pieces of hardware that can be reused along with some of the rubber gaskets here. The enclosure is completely empty now and I was just about to throw it out. This was really a pain getting it up on this pallet because it was extremely heavy. I would say it's around 100 kilograms for this small unit. But it also turns out that just trying to move it now, it's still around some, I would say, 50, maybe 40 kilograms. That's a solid steel plate at the bottom. I mean, wow. The Japanese really put some effort into making this bottom heavy for stability. I will try to cut that up and see what kind of plate is in the bottom of this. Okay, that was quite insane. I think this is the worst kind of canned food I have ever tried to open. Took a lot of tools, some hard work, but look at that. That is a serious piece of iron. Solid steel, steel plate, or at least a, a large beam and two smaller beams welded together and all welded to the bottom plate and the bottom plate had these standoffs for the feet welded on both sides as well. It was also riveted and also point the welded along the frame. So that took quite a lot more effort to open than I had first imagined. So that was it for part one of this teardown video. So stay tuned for part two where we look at the PMT Part 3 where we look at the laser scanning module. So until next time, see ya!